If your whole city was being invaded by terrifying aliens, what would you do? These monsters are killing everyone you know, and soon everyone in this country will die. I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the alien army in Parasite Part 2. This little twerp has no idea that he is about to die. High school student Shinichi here has had his life turned upside down. His body has been taken over by this rogue alien parasite called Miki, and they've gone through hell to survive the recent alien invasion, discovering that these monsters have finally begun to infiltrate the government. The two discuss on how to stop these parasites from taking over the world before it's too late. Miki here says that the aliens are trying to turn this town into a safe haven for parasites. Slowly but surely killing humans and using their flesh to disguise themselves as members of the government, which means it won't be long before they take over the entire country. However, Shinichi has bigger high school problems to deal with, and he tells Migi that before they go after any monsters, he needs to reveal his parasite power secret to one of the two girls that he sorta likes. Since anyways, he thinks she's onto them. He then goes to tell this girl to meet him at this abandoned warehouse, and he prepares to tell her his biggest secret. But that was also his biggest mistake. Shinichi's crush arrives at the warehouse, but Shinichi isn't there yet. Hearing some noise around this dark corner, she happily thinks it's her bae, but that's when she sees this horrifying alien feasting on this human corpse. She runs for her life and gets badly injured. Nearing the exit of the building, she tries to get away and sees Shinichi show up just in time to watch her get brutally stabbed through the heart. Shinichi is horrified and unleashes his inner alien beast, killing this parasite right here, and he watches one of the two girls that he likes die right in front of him. Well, what did you expect? Why would you take a girl that you like to an abandoned warehouse? Yes, it was semi-public, but what are you doing? This is horrifyingly stupid. Shinichi's had a wild ride ever since the alien invasion began and has lost family members like his mother and has seen friends from his school get brutally murdered in the process. But he's at a turning point now where the stakes will matter more than they ever have before. And this girl's death is proof of that. Because from the moment the alien invasion began, these parasites have been killing and infecting humans since they invaded Earth and have begun to kill and infect every level of society and government there is. And that's what makes this girl's death all the more terrifying. Because just like what Migi tried to do and failed with Shinichi when they first met, these aliens up until now have tried to infect people in secret, entering their body as smaller organisms and attaching themselves to the human brain, effectively taking over the human of their human host and their consciousness. This is what Migi tried and failed to do with Shinichi, which caused Shinichi to have his consciousness kept intact and ended up forcing both of them to coexist within each other. However, all of this alien invasion stuff started, like I said, in secret, as in under the radar, nobody noticed. But what happened to Shinichi's bay over here happened in broad daylight, and despite the attack happening in an abandoned house, this attack still took place near the proximity of a busy street and suburban houses, as we can tell from where this house resides. Why would you do that? Why would you take a girl to an abandoned house? You all know what this means, right? This means that the alien invasion is at a crossroads. It means that these monsters are getting more and more confident in their abilities to reside near human populations on a daily basis and still pull off attacks, which makes this a huge problem for society as a whole. And this is the reason why Shinichi shouldn't have arranged a meeting in some place that he wasn't familiar with and should have met up with this girl in the most obvious place that he could have taken her to, his house. Plus, doing this could have made it look like he was the stud that she kind of wished he was. And also, ever since Shinichi merged with Miki, the two have seen death left and right, and by the way have already drawn the attention of the FBI, and they've started looking at Shinichi. This means that inviting a high school girl to meeting him at an abandoned warehouse was so dumb and stupid to begin with. The next day, the FBI watched Shinichi at school. They know about the recent alien invasion, and they think Shinichi has something to do with it. Elsewhere, the other parasites have come together to discuss who or what killed one of their own members, and they begin growing concerned that the humans are learning more and more about them too quickly. Quickly. Suddenly, another alien parasite named Ryoko enters the room and reveals that Shinichi is likely the one who killed their teammate, and that his parasite is coexisting with him inside his hand. Ryoko is a low-key mad scientist, and she thinks that Shinichi's unique bond with his parasite makes him an amazing sample, and the group of parasites allow her to investigate Shinichi further. Later, she gets home and calls a local investigator to begin looking into Shinichi more, but this investigator has no idea that this job will cost him 
his life. That night, Shinichi thinks about his bay that he lost. I mean, he's got a second one, so why is he so upset? He thinks that because he can't express his emotions like he used to, he's becoming more alien than human. But Migi tells him to chill out. Frustrated, he goes for a walk and heads back to the warehouse where his crush died. However, the hired investigator follows behind him in the distance, and he records the whole thing. Inside, Shinichi blames himself for what happened and gets mad at Migi for being so logical about everything. Suddenly, Migi spots someone outside and charges to go kill him. He slaps the camera away from the investigator's hand. As he runs for his life, Shinichi tries to stop Migi from killing the man and holds him back long enough for the horrified investigator to get away for good. Shinichi has got to figure out a way to control this guy. This is insane. Migi here by now has proven that he's willing to kill anybody that tries to blow the lid off of Shinichi's terrifying alien secret. And this makes sense because even in the case that there was no alien invasion, getting found out that you had an alien parasite peacefully living inside of your own body would be more than enough grounds for any government on Earth to chase you down, deprive you of your rights, and turn you into a lab rat for years to come. Migi ensuring Shinichi's secret is being kept between them is paramount, as the discovery of a human-alien hybrid peacefully coexisting within each other will no doubt force some government's hand to have us enforceably disappear, because it means that certain governments can and still do practice making people disappear, if they go against some sort of nationalistic status quo. And even though this act ever since 2002 has been declared a crime against humanity, it still happens in dozens of countries worldwide. However, Miki didn't need to act hastily as he did, because in actuality, what Shinichi did was the smarter move. Because trying to cover up another dead body, the investigator, within our proximity from the last dead body we encountered, would have made Shinichi look even more guilty than he does right now, especially since the police already think that they have something to do with all of these murders. And if we were to look at the optics of this situation from a bird's eye view, having a single investigator whine to the police about what he saw when he doesn't have video proof will make his words worthless. And while him being an investigator might seem like his word may carry some weight, unlike police detectives or crime scene investigators, private investigators usually work for private citizens or businesses rather than government entities, which means that him approaching any police precinct and complaining about Shinichi's alien problem will add to the cops not believing a word out of his fat mouth, since without any concrete proof, he's just like any other investigator looking for some clout, since uncovering shocking answers is a part of his job. So in reality, Migi has nothing to worry about other than the fact that all of this attention being drawn from the uptick in parasite-related human murders, the government will likely already be on the case, which means that these two can't act as carelessly and be out of the open as they are right now, because one wrong move just like this one is probably going to cost them their entire lives. Migi loses energy and finally gives up, and Shinichi angrily tells him that they can't take an innocent life no matter what happens, and they head back home. The next day, Migi goes through the investigator's camera, and he tells Shinichi to be careful from now on, because if anyone from the government or the news finds out about their secret, they'll soon be dead or worse, turned into a horrifying lab rat experiment. Shinichi then begins to worry that it won't be long, either before they get discovered by the public or by the army of evil parasites, and he gets ready for the horrors that are soon headed their way. Nervous about what might happen to him soon, he decides to tell the second girl that he likes and longtime friend Satomi his parasite secret before it's too late again. Is it just me or am I experiencing deja vu? He meets up with her and she accuses him also of acting all cold and callous and having no emotion recently. He tries to tell her his parasite secret but chokes at the last minute and decides to keep her in the dark where he thinks she'll be safe. Later, Shinichi decides to meet up with his old friend Big Mouth to help track down their investigator. Just like Shinichi, Big Mouth and his alien parasite have managed to coexist with one another in one body, and they've agreed to help him out again. Elsewhere, the investigator meets up with his client Ryoko to tell him of the alien horrors that he saw. The investigator begins to freak out and thinks that Ryoko already knew about Shinichi's alien hand all along, but she ignores him and leaves. But she has no idea what horrors this man is about to commit. The next day, Shinichi she gets word that Big Mouth and his alien parasite have found the investigator and have even managed to catch him. Taking him on a drive in this car, Shinichi decides to fill in the investigator on everything that happened to Shinichi since the day that the alien invasion began and the day that Migi accidentally invaded Shinichi's hand. They then find out from the investigator that the person who paid him to spy on Shinichi and Migi was in fact Ryoko, the parasite who tried to kill them earlier at Shinichi's school. Horrified at all of this, the investigator gives up on 
spying on them for good. Later that night, Shinichi gets a call from Ryoko and she asks to meet. The following day, the two meet up at this rooftop. Shinichi then asks her what the parasites and the government are planning for the humans and Ryoko here reveals their insane plan. She says that the parasites and the government have begun their plans to try and coexist with humans but doesn't know the full story yet. Shinichi then asks her what she plans to do with the human baby that her host body recently gave birth to. And Ryoko reveals to him that once the baby is old enough, she'll begin to commit horrifying experiments on it to see if it inherited any parasite powers. This angers Shinichi and he prepares to fight her right here and now. And Ryoko dares Shinichi to make a move and uses her baby as a human shield of meat. But suddenly they're interrupted by humans nearby. Shinichi then gets away before he loses his shit. Later that night, Shinichi thinks of all the parasites that they've killed since Migi entered his hand and then he suddenly has a terrible idea. He then tells Migi that they've won against parasites in the past when it was just one on one and somehow thinks that this is a brilliant idea to have him and Migi take on all of Japan's parasite monsters one by one. And then maybe, just maybe, they can stop the invasion. We need to take a second to pause here and discuss what just Shinichi really said. That is insanely stupid. We have to remember that at the end of the day, these aliens, despite their high intellect, are animals where it counts. They haven't shown up to Earth on a spaceship, but came down through the air for unknown reasons, of which they themselves don't even know why. And how they landed on Earth is important, because if they had shown up on spaceships, then this would have meant that they would have had a super advanced civilization capable of interstellar flight, which also would have likely made them capable of wiping out humanity, since they would have been technically superior to humans to begin with. But since they showed up without a real say in the whole thing, this means that at the end of the day, they're just like us. Scared animals bred to be good at one thing. Replication and survival. This means that these parasites, in order to survive, have probably by now formed coalitions and groups in order to better stand a chance at surviving and coordinating their survival efforts with multiple groups. And what Shinichi is proposing is stupid as hell by taking out parasites one by one Rambo style. This ain't the movies, that's not really gonna work. This is going to cause their species as a whole to begin taking notice of Shinichi and that means it won't be long before their arms armies formally rain down hell upon us in the thousands. And Shinichi's army is an army of two at the moment. If Shinichi wants to survive, then he should focus on finding more people like Big Mouth. Someone who is just like Shinichi. One who has been infected with the parasite, but still has retained their individual consciousness and will. And because Shinichi has met someone just like him, it means that it's not that improbable to think that there's more people like Shinichi and Big Mouth out there that he could try to recruit and build his own network base. Building a team to tackle this problem more methodically would be better and could serve them even better long term with dealing with the parasite invasion. Shinichi could even try recruiting full on parasites and while dangerous and incredibly risky, we have to remember that at the end of the day, their species are not exactly evil. They just exist and are simply doing what they think is necessary to survive. But if we can convince some of them to join our side that it's going to help benefit their survival in some way, then we're going to have a better shot at defeating the other parasites in the long run. Fighting parasites one on one like it's his job, which he's not even getting paid for is the stupidest thing I've ever heard come out of someone's mouth and I know this for a fact because I work with the Dom's big mouth for a living. At the parasite meeting, the parasites say that since the alien invasion began, Shinichi has been killing too many of their kind and they've now put a bounty on his head. Later at school, Shinichi tries to make nice with Satomi and Miki mentions that he detects some parasites nearby. Shinichi wanting revenge against the parasites and finally fed up with them gets a little too excited and runs off to go fight them but that was his biggest mistake. Migi prepares Shinichi on the battle plan, but that's when he realizes the most horrifying thing. He's nearly out of energy. From the moment that Migi restarted Shinichi's weak puny heart, he now needs to recharge once a day for four hours. He tells Shinichi that while he's asleep, Shinichi won't be able to use any of his alien powers. And he tells Shinichi that all he can do until Migi wakes up is to run. Shinichi then runs for his sweet ass life and takes a train out of the city, ending up in a small town. But something is not right. And he sees a tax they pull up near him, and a strange man gets out. Pretty Boy then approaches Shinichi, but he can tell that something is not right. Thinking this person is a parasite, Shinichi continues running and manages to catch a ride deeper into the forest. But that's when he sees Pretty Boy right on his tail, just as Migi finally wakes up. Shocked, Migi tells Shinichi that he can sense that this parasite is more horrifying than the rest, and has multiple parasites in one body. Pretty Boy launches another attack on Shinichi as he again runs 
for his life, Migi then senses that Pretty Boy's tentacles are all connected to one mind, which means that all of his extra arms and weapons are useless if there's no head to control it. Migi then tells Shinichi to stop in this spot and aim for the head. Shinichi charges at Pretty Boy and dodges his attacks until he cuts off his head, but that's when they see the most sickening and disheartening thing. Pretty Boy's head begins to merge back with his body, and they discover that Pretty Boy is a parasite known as Goto, an experimental parasite that was created by them and has the powers of five parasites in one body. Okay, this is insane, because what these guys have encountered is something more terrifying than any alien they've ever seen before. This alien is called Goto, and remember that Ryoko girl who was low-key a mad scientist? Well, she basically created this monster in a lab, and this man has five different parasites in his body, and he can use all five of their powers at the same time. Pretty Boy that we saw earlier was just one of the parasites taking lead in this body, but now that the Goto parasite is taking control of this body, Shinichi's about to be in huge trouble. And Goto having five times the parasites in his body means that by default, he has five times the bloodlust and the desire to kill every human he sees, and he's many times smarter than the average parasite, making this guy the perfect killing machine. And one force that Shinichi and Miki here cannot possibly stop. They gotta run. Goto also has the ability to adapt his parasite to the environment, being able to change his hands and feet to claws and long cheetah-like legs. This means that these two being within this tree line makes them severely at risk of being killed due to Koto's ability to climb and get around the trees faster than they can run away, at least in the forest. However, I do want to point something out. While Goto was changing his consciousness after having his head get cut off, Migi and Shinichi just sat there like two chumps, and Migi gave us the rundown exposition of what this guy is. He could have just told us about this as we ran away. In reality, Migi could have explained all of this later, and the two of them could have used the extra time that they had to get away further. For an alien parasite, Migi's incredibly smart, but he right now isn't the brightest bulb in this basket. Don't come at me, weebs, you know I'm right. Migi tells Shinichi that he will die if he tries to fight him, and knowing that they can't beat him, they run and hitch a ride on this truck to escape. They take a breather and think they're safe, but that's when they see in the distance Goto chasing them down at horrifying speed. He grabs onto the side of their truck, and Migi attempts to make the truck driver crash into incoming vehicles. This knocks Goto off and onto the road, and Shinichi and Migi manage to escape for now. Later, Shinichi arrives back into town and changes his clothes to blend in. Knowing that the parasites will come for everyone he loves, he calls his dad and tells him to leave town for a while or else. Elsewhere, the parasite committee comes together to tell Ryoko the most horrifying thing, and they tell her that they've managed to kill the investigator's family since he knew too much. Ryoko gets angry and tells them that this will cost them big and that they've been attracting too much attention. However, the parasites suspect that Ryoko has gone too soft on the humans ever since her host body gave birth to a baby, and they decide that she needs to be killed. Ryoko then heads back home, but that's when she finds herself surrounded by some of the parasites from the committee, and they've come to kill her. Ryoko then escapes into this construction site, and her killers follow behind her. This one chick tries to come at her, but Ryoko brutally infects her with her parasite, which causes her to go mad, and Ryoko runs off again. One of the other parasites try to follow her, but thinks that he has lost his mind. This causes him to head back to his parasite group to figure out what's going on. But coming back, he discovers that one of his friends has become infected with Ryoko's parasite, and he decides to put her out of her misery. He then realizes that this was all a part of Ryoko's plan, just as she suddenly shows up and brutally dismembers him, killing him and part of the parasite committee for good. Later, Ryoko goes home and finds out that her baby has been taken by the investigator with a note, telling her to meet him in the park. She then heads to Shinichi's house to look at Shinichi's baby pictures, and she calls Shinichi from his home phone, and Shinichi freaks out and thinks that his dad is in trouble, but she tells Shinichi that she's not planning to harm him, and tells him to meet her in the same park as the investigator, so she can give him an undisclosed package. However, on the way to the park, Shinichi's second high school crush, Satomi, sees Ryoko come out of Shinichi's house and decides to follow her. At the park, Ryoko finally arrives to see the investigator holding her baby. He tells her that she cost him everything and wants revenge for his family. He tries to throw the baby off the edge, but gets stabbed through the body by Ryoko and she saves the child, about to die. The investigator is shocked and realizes that Ryoko, an alien parasite, actually cares for a human, and he falls off the edge. Just then, the police reach the investigator's mangled body, and they tell him that they were tracking him. He then tells the detective that a girl named Ryoko did this to him, and that his blood and DNA is on her baby. Shortly thereafter, he dies. Nearby, Shinichi finally arrives, and Ryoko tells him that she's discovered that parasites don't need to feed on humans to survive, and that there is a way for both species to peacefully coexist with each other. 
there. She also warned Shinichi that the man he fought earlier today, Goto, is the most horrifying parasite to ever exist, and to avoid him at all costs. Suddenly, the police arrive and see Ryoko holding a baby with blood on its clothes, just like the investigators said. Not wanting more people to die, Glasses Guy Police Chief here isn't taking any chances and whips out his gray matter blaster, firing at Ryoko and horrifying his men. However, realizing that this mother with a baby is a parasite, the rest of the police join in to try to kill her. Ryoko then protects the child, and she begins walking to Shinichi, getting closer and closer to him. And the police stop firing, and Migi suspects that this might be a trap, but Shinichi goes with his gut and discovers that Ryoko wants Shinichi to take care of the child, and then she collapses in front of everyone and dies, shocking everyone here. Whoa, this is a big deal! What Ryoko just did here was huge. She just showed us that these alien monsters are capable of higher thought, and by this I don't mean that these aliens aren't self-aware, because they clearly are. But Ryoko's actions here in protecting another life form that wasn't her own shows that these alien parasites are more complex than we thought. People like Shinichi and Big Mouth are case example of what happens when the human brain isn't taken over by a parasite. And these two display to us how the human consciousness and the alien parasite can eventually find ways to coexist within the same body. But in this case, Ryoko here was a full-on parasite from the start. Her parasite clearly infected this human host and took over its brain. Meaning that the actual human that Ryoko inhabited wasn't in control since the beginning. This means that within the cognitive structure of a parasite, or at least while they're fully embedded within the human host, there is some sort of mimicked response within their system to show empathy and compassion towards others. And it was obvious that Ryoko not only cared for this human child, but protected it till the end. That means something. This could mean that the parasites, despite their programming to take over a human brain, are still susceptible to inheriting their human host's behavior, as after all, they're inhabiting a human brain to begin with. Now while this also could mean that Ryoko felt compassion for her child, since her host purposely tried to conceive that child, which means the only reason she acted the way she did was due to her host's maternal instincts, overpowering her alien brain after it gave birth, interfering with the parasite's control. But regardless, this is a huge sign, and one that Shinichi should use to find out if parasites can really be influenced by their host's natural biological tendencies in some way. Because at the end of the day, despite them being an alien, they are using human tech, as in their bodies, to survive. Meaning there likely could be a way to exploit their weaknesses. However, Shinichi already being under the magnifying lens of the police means that he should be very careful about how he talks about parasites with the government, as they'll likely turn him into a lab rat if they find out his experiment. Instead, if I was Shinichi, I would play dumb with the government, but later send them an untraceable letter, mail, or some sort of an anonymous account, revealing everything we know about parasites, about Ryoko, to the police. This could allow them to get the edge on the parasites and put Ryoko's body to good use. Since at this rate, they'll likely never find out shit about these monsters, because it will take too long to gain the upper hand. Shinichi and Migi are stunned at Ryoko's actions, and they wonder why didn't she choose to run or fight back this whole time. Just then, Satome arrives at the scene and sees Shinichi crying and showing human emotion for the first time in a long while. Later, the police bring Shinichi and his dad into this laboratory for questioning. Bringing him into this waiting room, they mention that since Shinichi seems to attract parasites wherever he goes, maybe he can sense them and even help the police track their kind down. But Shinichi has no idea that all of this is is a horrifying trap. Next door, the police ask this guy who claims to be able to tell parasites from humans, and they ask him if he can figure out if these people are parasites or not. Creepy face then begins going through them, clearing them one by one until Shinichi enters the room, and they ask Shinichi if the prisoner in front of him is secretly a parasite. But Shinichi says that he's not sure. He begins to freak out inside and tries to calm himself down, but across from him through the glass, this detective wonders if this kid is more involved with the parasite than he seems. Suddenly, Creepy Face senses something within Shinichi and looks at him dead in the eye. The police hold their breath and think for a sec that maybe Shinichi is actually a parasite, but because Migi is sleeping, Creepy Face isn't able to detect any alien body inside of Shinichi. Creepy Face then says that he's made a mistake and that Shinichi is not a parasite, saving Shinichi for now. Elsewhere, Goto meets with his minions and they tell him that more and more parasites are beginning 
going to die, and that the Japanese government has started to treat the alien invasion more seriously, even creating a specialized task force to deal with them. And these monsters prepare to brutally murder everyone soon. The next day, the specialized task force shows up to this building, unknown hangout spot for parasites, and they surround the place. And they tell everyone on loudspeaker to gather near the entrance. Outside, the police chief asks Creepyface to use his sensing powers to help the police and tell who is a parasite in that room along with Shinichi. But both of them say that they can't tell. The police chief then tells his men to ready their x-ray sensors right near the exits of the building, and they wait for the people to come out. The new mayor of the city inside of this building then tells the police to evacuate the people most in need first, and groups of people begin to exit the building, while the police secretly try to figure out who looks human and who doesn't. Suddenly they spot this one parasite through the x-ray scanners and immediately kill it. The leader of the police force, Commander Studface, then tells his men to bring over Creepyface to use his powers on these people. But that's when these humans then transform into horrifying aliens, killing this one cop and the rest shoot these two dead on sight. However, they then discover that they've accidentally shot the sensing system, and now they can't tell parasites from humans. Commander Studface then reveals that his plan was to never save anyone, but to kill the parasites at all costs. He and his men walk into the building and begin killing anyone who doesn't listen to them. Suddenly, they get word that some parasites have fled into the building, and he and his men split up to find them, bringing along Creepyface. Creepyface's group then encounters one of the parasites, but that's when he realizes who this parasite is. Goto! Creepyface runs for his life, and this cop runs after him. The soldiers then follow Goto as he leads them into this killing room, and they prepare to fire, but that was their biggest mistake. Suddenly, they start firing, but quickly realize that Goto has absorbed all of their bullets, and he fires right back at the soldiers, killing everyone here one by one in a horrifying bloodbath. Okay, this whole thing is a shit show. Because while we can all admit that the commander stud face pulls off a three-piece suit better than those dudes from Peaky Blinders, he greatly underestimated these parasite scum. And despite there already being a bloodbath, it's going to get a whole lot worse. Because from the get-go, he assumed that these horrifying creatures were simple-minded monsters that were easy to exterminate like rats. And he even had Shinichi on standby outside for the sole purpose of helping out. But Commander Studface even then continued to disregard what Shinichi told him about flamethrowers being a weakness of these parasites. And he thought his team was more hot shit than they really were. Knowing that they were up against a race of unknown origin from outer freaking space, it's not inconceivable to imagine that they could have used any edge they could have gotten. And they already know that these creatures are batshit crazy. So using batshit crazy tactics and weaponry might be just what they should have done to use to combat these things. But what makes this all the more terrifying is that these guys went in all gung-ho and assumed they knew what they were up against. But when you think about how these creatures are designed to evolve from entering the Earth's atmosphere to adapting their body to live within a human host, it makes sense that over time, these parasites' rapid evolution could mean that some of these individual creatures would evolve into being more deadly than others. And these are creatures at the end of the day, designed to survive at all costs. Commander Studface and his team should have assumed that the exact powers and ranks of the parasites were variables that they could have control or properly predict, and they should have been more careful and more ready to expect the unexpected. Especially after their initial plan during the first phase kinda was a major flop. Killing the parasites at any cost, while badass in theory, was stupid and means that he unnecessarily cost the lives of all of his men, and while I do love this meaningless bloodbath, Commander Studface's stupidity makes him unworthy of having such a badass name and also his badass three-piece suit. He's not worthy of either of them. Commander Studface then gets notified that a part of his team has been wiped out by Goto. He tells the rest of his men to come around from the other side of the building to try and trap him. Nearby, the police corner the mayor of the city. They discover that he wants to use the parasites to exterminate the weak people of the world and to make the human race stronger, but the police kill him. However, they thought he was a parasite, but the man was in fact human. Goto then enters the room pissed as hell and prepares to brutally kill everyone here. Just outside, Commander Studface and his men arrive just to see Goto walk out of the room full of corpses. They shoot at him, but he dodges every attack and rips everyone here to shreds. Horrified. Commander Studface makes his men retreat to the roof, but Goto's super speed catches up to his men, and he kills the rest of them on the way, leaving behind only Commander Studface. And Goto finally decapitates him, killing the entire force once and for all. Nearby, Shinichi comes out to see that Goto has thrown Commander Studface's head into the bushes. He's horrified just as Goto jumps down and sees him, pissed off that he's here. He tells Shinichi that he will now die before the week's end, and then he runs off before more police show up. Shinichi later then begins to lose his mind, and thinks Goto is everywhere he looks. He runs to the park to calm himself down, just as he sees Satomi, seeing him worried. She invites him back
back to her empty house and tries to <coughs> help out some of Shinichi's worries. The next day, thanks to Satomi's wizardry, Shinichi, much now greatly relieved, realizes that he's got to stop Goto no matter what it takes. Suddenly, Migi alerts him that Goto is nearby and is approaching them fast. They quickly steal a car and try to escape outside of town. Migi has an idea, and they try to run their car into Goto off a cliff, but they quickly realize that this monster is unstoppable. With one last idea up his sleeve, Migi tells Shinichi to retreat into the forest, and that's where Migi breaks apart his alien body all over the trees, and Shinichi hides nearby. Now, unable to sense where Shinichi is, Goto tries looking for him, but that's when Migi distracts him, allowing Shinichi to throw a flame-lit spear right into his leg. This causes Goto's cells and his body to become unstable, and right then Migi uses this moment to try and cut off his head, but that was his biggest mistake! Migi realizes that he's failed to properly cut off Goto's head, and with no backup plan left, Migi tells Shinichi to run as he tries to hold Goto off. Shinichi is horrified as he runs away. Migi, being a part of Shinichi's body for so long, eventually dies. Later that night, Shinichi, now exhausted, arrives at a nearby town and gets caught trying to steal some water from this grandma. Feeling sorry for him, old lady grandma lets Shinichi stay the night. As he goes to sleep, he wakes up in horror and realizes that a part of Migi's DNA is still inside of him, seeing his eye pop out from his arm before disappearing again. And then Shinichi and grandma bond over the next few days and blah blah blah, Shinichi takes a break from his alien fighting life, but he doesn't realize that the people around him are about to die. Suddenly, a mob shows up outside of grandma's house and complain that a horrifying murder has taken place inside the village. They think outsider Shinichi might know something about it, and this witness says that he saw a terrifying creature out in the forest last night kill his friend. Shinichi realizes that Koto has arrived in this village, and it won't be long before Koto finds him and tries to kill him. Okay, this is terrifying, because while Shinichi did well to run away when he was out of options, he's royally screwed up this big time. Retreating to a nearby village to rest when he was critically injured was the advisable thing to do for the night. However, staying there for longer than that after he was all healed up was stupid as hell. He got complacent and did what all anime protagonists do after they get the shit beat out of them by the big villain. He thought he could forget about it all. He thought he could forget about the murderous alien on his ass. Wrong oh, he was very wrong. Because we know that Shinichi couldn't have gotten far as he left the area where Goto was during the day and arrived at the village seemingly at night. After his <laughs> wizard session with Satomi, if you know what I mean, that it was between the late morning to early afternoon when Shinichi got word from Migi that Goto was on his way to kill him. And we can also assume that the drive they took into the forest took around a few hours at minimum, since the terrain surrounding the village where Grandma lived seemed to be vastly different to the city from which Shinichi just came from. And since the blood on Shinichi's face still looked fresh, we can also assume that Shinichi reaching Grandma's house happened mere hours after he ran away from Goto. This means that Shinichi didn't travel no distance for jack shit. Plus, him being injured didn't help, and the only reason that Goto didn't catch up with him to begin with was likely because he was critically injured thanks to Migi nearly decapitating his head, and due to the injury his cells took, which Shinichi impaled him with that flame-lit spear means that he likely needed time to rest and repair before trying to hunt Shinichi down again. Shinichi covered far less ground than he should have, and let complacency get the best of him, meaning that whatever shitstorm is about to kick him in the face, he totally deserves. The old fossil of the lady tries to stop Shinichi from leaving to take on the monster, but Shinichi tells her that he needs to finish what he started. Unable to convince him, she lets Shinichi take one of her knives, and he heads out to stop Goto once and for all. Heading out deep into the forest, he finally spots the terrifying Goto, but he's asleep, without much of Migi left inside of him. Shinichi realizes that Goto can't sense his presence. He creeps up behind him and prepares to strike, but suddenly Goto wakes up and knocks him back. Now, horrifyingly angry, Goto begins looking for Shinichi as he tries to think of a new plan. Seeing this spike, he hides in this tree, and he tries to surprise attack him but fails. Mad at Koto for Migi's death, Shinichi tries to punch him but gets knocked back a final time into this pile of trash, now bleeding from his mouth, and Koto fast approaching him. He thinks of one last move. He spots this rusty pipe. Grabbing it, he bum rushes Goto and manages to stab him near his weak point in between his armor. However, he realizes that his cut wasn't deep enough, and this makes Goto even more angry. Now, out of options, Shinichi prepares to die, and Goto tries to brutally kill Shinichi, but that's when Migi suddenly blocks his attack and absorbs Goto's entire arm onto Shinichi's body. Migi is alive. Oh, that was stressful. Goto is horrified as his body begins to become unstable. Migi then reveals that the rusty pipe that Shinichi stabbed him with had toxins laced onto it from the trash pile. And now that five parasites in Koto's body are sensing the toxins, they're trying to escape from his body. Now unable to control his body anymore, his body begins to explode as Migi deals the final strike and makes him blow up. However, he tells Shinichi that if they don't finish the job, Goto will soon 
regenerate and come back to life. Knowing this, Shinichi destroys the last bits of Goto's destroyed body, killing him for good. And the two head back into town to return to their old life. One year later, as Shinichi sleeps, Migi in his dreams tells him that he'll leave Shinichi and go into a form of hibernation for an unspecified amount of time. Waking up, Shinichi realizes that his right hand has become fully human again. Saddened by the loss of Migi, he tries to continue on with his normal life. Since Goto's death, all the parasite attacks have seemingly stopped worldwide. But Shinichi thinks that these terrifying monsters have finally managed to blend into society for good, hiding within their hosts. Later, while out on a walk with Satomi, Shinichi runs into none other than Creepy Face. He abducts Satomi and takes her onto this roof. He reveals to Shinichi that he knew about his parasite powers all along and demands that he reveal his secret to him and Satomi. Terrified at the idea of his girlfriend learning his secret, Shinichi tries to distract Creepy Face, but that's when he throws Satomi off of the roof. Shinichi rushes to try and save her, knocking out Creepy Face as he manages to barely save her sweet life. And now he's finally become less of a loser now thanks to Migi. And Shinichi finally becomes his own man and turns into the stud muffin of his own story once and for all. But what did you guys think about the video? Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a thumbs up down below, let us know what you like about it, what you didn't like about it, and as always don't forget to check out our social media and our How To Beat Anime After Show coming this Thursday.